Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide and today we will be speeding through section number three of test four. Um, not explanation wise, but video wise. We are going through these pretty fast. So last time we stopped on number six. So today we will be starting from number seven. I just realized I have three different greens in my color palette. That's that's actually pretty funny. It must be because of my logo that I spent drawing. Uh, I keep on saying spend drawing. I bet at least one student thinks that he thinks way too highly of his logo. But the, number seven, uh, let's not make that logo situation awkward. So this looks sort of like three golden rectangles and three squares to be honest with you inside one big golden rectangle okay so this is a this is b this is c this is d this is e and this is f so the figure above shows the top view of an open square box that is divided into six compartments with walls of equal height each of the rectangles D, E, and F has twice the area of each of the equal squares A, B, and C, respectively, I guess. You can also add that in. When a marble is dropped into the box at random, it falls into one of the compartments. What is the probability that it will fall into compartment F? So, one very important thing that they let us know is the area of the golden mini rectangles are two times the area of the small squares. So if we say the area of the small squares are um, P, no particular reason why, uh, the area of the golden rectangles would be 2P. And maybe not according to my picture because it's not drawn to scale, but that's the point. It's not drawn to scale. So as assume that this is drawn to scale and that you can assume. Um, so if a marble is dropped randomly into box F, which is this one, the area of box F is 2P. And the total area of the entire rectangle is 2 times 3, which is 6P, plus another 3P from the squares. So 2p over 9p, and you could cross off the p's, and you get 2 over 9, which is the probability, and that is choice E. So we'll move on to the next problem. I always like this red color. If a and b are odd integers, which of the following must also be an odd integer? Okay. Since they're asking problems about even and odd, let's go over all the essential rules of adding, multiplying, evens and odds. You know, the operations of evens and odds. So, an even and an even. An even plus minus an even is going to be equal to an even. An odd plus minus an odd is going to be equal to an even. And that kind of looks like a creepy face, in my opinion. An even plus minus an odd will be equal to an odd. That was a D. An odd. But now, multiplication and division wise, it's a little bit different. E times, let's, let's just use a dot for times. Times or divided by even will be equal to an even. An odd multiplied by or divided by an odd will be equal to an odd. An even multiplied or divided by an odd, or vice versa, will be equal to an even. And in the multiplication ones, they're all, and every single other one, they're all vice versa. They're the same. So, in this case, um, A and B are both odd integers, so they all fit into this these equations. So, choice Roman 1 says A plus 1 times B. So that's just saying odd plus odd times an odd. Well, odd plus odd is an even. And an even times an odd is still an even. 
So we know that that must not be an odd integer in any case, so we can cross that off. Choice Roman 2 says a plus 1 plus b. Well, this is odd plus an odd plus an odd. So odd plus odd is even. Odd plus even. Oh, sorry. Yeah, even plus odd is odd. So that must always be an odd number. So Roman choice 2 is correct. How about Roman choice 3? A plus 1 minus B. Well, this is going to be equal to odd plus odd minus odd. Odd plus odd is an even, and even minus an odd is an odd. So you now see why I wrote plus e either plus or minus instead of just a plus, because it also works the other way around. So an even subtracted by an odd or an even subtracted from an odd will be an odd number. So that is the correct answer, or one, one of the correct answers. And the total correct collective answer is choice E, which is both choices Roman 2 and Roman 3. So we'll move on to the next problem. Number 9. And there is a very complicated number here. 5.10001. Okay, I get the pattern. 0000100000. So on and so forth. The decimal number above consists of only ones and zeros to the right of the decimal point. Sounds like they got inspired by the binary system. Uh. The first one is followed by one zero. The second one is followed by two zeros. The third one is followed by three zeros, and so on. What is the number of zeros between the 98th and the 101st one in this decimal number? So, basically, the equation you could set up is the number of zeros is equal to the nth one. Uh, is there a better way to say that? Uh, n number... Yeah, okay, I can say it like that. n number of zeros are after the nth one. So, five numbers, five zeros are after the fifth one. Ninety-seven zeros are after the ninety-seventh one. So, ninety-eight zeros are after the ninety-eighth one. Then 99 zeros are after the 99th one. Then 100 zeros are after the 100th one. But what about the 101st one? Well, there's not 101 zeros before the 101st term. So this is where we stop. And we add it all together and we will get 297. And that is choice D, which is the correct answer. Now we'll move on to number 10. We'll transition to number 10. Let's keep that period, um, I don't know, <laughs> varied. 3 minus 2x squared divided by x for non-zero x. I'm just writing out this equation before I read out the problem. So, if this equation is true for all non-zero x, then... What is f of 2? Not x, f of 2. So we just need to plug in 2 for every x in the equation. So that's 3 minus 2 times 2 squared. Mind it's not squaring the first 2, or else it, this would have been put in brackets. But since it's not in brackets, we know that it's only squaring the x, the x term, divided by 2. This will be equal to 3 minus 2 times positive 4 divided by 2, which will be equal to 3 minus 8, um, 8 divided by 2, which will be equal to negative 5 divided by 2. And that is choice D, which is the correct answer. So... Number 11 is a picture. Well, rather, it looks like a parallel perpendicular problem, which 
usually don't confuse that much because you know you can't go that wrong with lines but it sometimes happens now, M this is X degrees this is Y degrees and that was a right angle so figure not drawn to scale in the figure above L is perpendicular to N and X is greater than 90 which of the following must be true well for starters we can see that y is the supplementary angle of x. So if x is greater than 90, y has to be less than 90 because they need to add up to be 180. So both of them can't be greater than 90, nor can both of them be less than 90. If x is greater than 90, y will be less than 90. And that is choice A. But you c if you have spare time over, you could check each of the other ones to make sure that they are wrong. Choice B says Y must be greater than 90, but it's not possible or else that would add up to an angle greater than 180. Y is equal to 90. Again, it would still add up to an angle greater than 180 because X is already greater than 90. N is uh, perpendicular to M. If N is perpendicular to L, but uh, N still creates an angle with X that is greater than 90, we know that N is not perpendicular to M. L parallel to M, well, as we can see, um, the perpendicular angles to, uh, over here and the non-perpendicular angle over here suggest that L cannot be parallel to M, or else both of them would have 90 degree angles, or both of them would have X degrees and Y degrees. At least the same values of x degrees and y degrees in this case so now number 12 is just a word problem in the xy plane the line with equation y equals 5x minus 10 crosses the x-axis at the point with co coordinates a comma b what is the value of a the reason why they didn't ask what is the value of b because the value of b in this case would be too easy I'll, I'm explaining that in a bit. So y equals 5x minus 10. And it crosses the x-axis at, oops, not x comma axis, x-axis at point a comma b. Well, if it crosses the x-axis, we know that the value of y at that time will be equal to 0 because the x the y value of the entire x axis is equal to 0 so if we know the y value is 0 we know b is the y value so really the point is a comma 0 and now we can plug this in into this equation over here so y equals 5x minus 10 y is equal to 0 so Let's just add the 10 over to the other side. 10 is equal to 5x, and x is equal to 2, which is the correct answer, and that is choice D. And I think we can go over one more problem before I severely run out of time. Number 13. Actually, I've changed my mind. Number 13 has a lot of a huge chart, and although... It's not really that tough for you to do this problem within two, uh, two minutes. I would have to draw the entire graph. So I'm just going to leave it right there. I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation. And I will see you in the next video. Keep studying. Till then, lots of important stuff coming.